welcome back to another episode of the Chirp Hockey Podcast. This is episode number nine. Finally, we are back, and we have a special guest, as you guys can see, Greg Gatto. What's up, Greg? Back in action in beautiful West Texas. I know. We've had a few people. I was, we actually, who was I talking to the other day, and I sent a picture, and I was with Gatto, and they were like, oh, is he coming back to visit? And I'm like, no, he's back. He's back. He's back. Odessa sucked you back in. Third time. Third time's <laughs> third, the charm. You said third tour, right? Third tour. Third yeah. tour. I think it was Adam always said, you cry when you leave and you cry when you come back. Yeah, exactly. But you're not doing hockey this time. No hockey. Working working for Adam, Adam's company, learning the hard stuff, and started my own little company on the side. Still involved in hockey a little bit, so it's been good. Yeah, I've heard some good stuff, seen some good stuff. So I heard you're getting some, some uh, young fellas. Uh, you're starting to place them in some uh, schools and junior hockey. Tell us about that. Well, it's an advisor, right? Or I guess you can, when we did it, it was an agent. Now it's you can't do that when they're going to school, so you're called an advisor. And my wife's been telling me that for the last 10 years I should be doing it because that's what we do as coaches. You help them find spots to play. Yeah, you're already doing it. You're already doing it. So now I just uh, I kind of started my own little thing and helping guys. And yeah, Adam was good. He gave me my first couple up in Dallas, and I have some really good players up there and just kind of keep beating the pavement, looking for players and finding them spots. And we have another person to help us out with youth hockey, it looks like, here for the next 21-22 uh, season. I'm just pushing pucks this year. <laughs> Ripping slappers and pushing pucks. Oh, oh. He's up, Johnny. <laughs> Budweiser shirt, 1876. Margo's always recruiting. Always. Well, always. I got a pretty good coaching staff for Odessa, Texas. I got yourself now. I got Johnny, <laughs> Adam, Dan Laverne. You know, you got a few few dads that push pucks, you know, every, every week for us. And, uh, you know, obviously with youth hockey – you know, with a learn to play program starting this month, I think it's you know we should be over 200 kids this year, so it's a big, uh, it's a big addition to our program. So thanks, Greg. <laughs> yeah, appreciate that. <laughs> so let's get into it. We we've had a lot of people actually ask why Margo hasn't brought up a lot of the old stories, and I think you're the perfect guy to kind of pull some out of them. I know there's probably some stuff that you don't want to say um, because you think it's maybe too inappropriate or whatever, but that's, I I mean, I don't want you to like push the envelope, but I want to hear some good (laughs) stuff because I've heard all the stories and I know there's stuff that you could say out here. That's, that's appropriate for our podcast, but I think Greg can kind of pull some out of you. So you guys played together. uh, Wait. Yeah. You guys played together, right? Mm -hmm. What a season or two or what? One year. And then the year next year, I think I coached. I only came here for one year. It was my last year. Well, I was in juniors and Greg was starting to retire. So that's their age. A little little bit older. Yeah. (laughs) I always tell the same story that when I first got here, I honestly thought his first name was Shut Up because that's all we said was Shut Up, Margetti. <laughs> the whole team would just say Shut Up, Margetti. And you, when you came in, you had been here how long? Oh, I've been here. Uh, he was the king. He was, was the mayor of time. Odessa. Yeah, I was here a long time. You know, Greg came t- down. He brought his little staff with him. He had his galley and Greener. Yep. Uh, Cracks. Yeah, Eddie Santa. came. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie came. came. In on a few it was a good. Uh, it was Those good. Well, we had to bring with? the toughness in, right? We had no toughness besides well, Margo. <laughs> I'll give Fritter and Margo, but other than that. She's a little soft cooking here. <laughs> we had to bring the West to, to grease the machinery. Bring the heavyweights. Bit. Yeah, it was good. It was good. It was, it was a great year that year. We had Hoffman. And we had a table set up like this, and we had a pile of Sudafed on one side and a case of Red Bull on the other, and Margo was our dealer. All right, who's got? How many you got? How many Sudis you on? How many, how many Red Bulls? Just pushing it around the locker room. Nope, just sat right in the middle, and he was like the dealer just throwing out stuff. And then I actually made the hockey news for that. Uh, it was Don Cruz, not Tom. It was Don. Can you speak in the mic? Margo's Margo's on episode nine. He still doesn't know how to speak into the microphone. Don Cruz, yeah. Tom. Tom. That was when that cocktail was out. That was microphone. You. Listen, if I get a microphone like you one of these days, you know, I know I'm not the main oh, sponsor yeah. of this show, but uh, it'd be nice to I upgrade me. I have one me. for you, and you didn't want it. Shit. <laughs> That's awesome. Got so, a baby microphone. So, so let's hear some stories. What 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 was some good stories with Margo, and or vice versa? I probably missed a lot of them because we were older by the time I got here. You know, it was, wasn't, I, was, I think I was telling somebody that today. Like, it wasn't the heyday of my hockey. It was kind of the end. I came in, and I, I was probably 30. Like, Sebi was a rookie, I think, at that time. You know, we were, it was a good team, though. You know, we were the Odessa Trapalopes. So we never left. I didn't go so past center had, ice. you had uh, Don McKee as Don, the Don coach? McKee. Don McKee. Do your Don McKee. Uh, Greg, uh, it's good to have you. Uh, <laughs> brought you in from San Antonio for a few reasons. Was he? Is uh, he good? Because he, did he have some health issues or something? What he's was good. Going? Yeah, he I, did. I, I yeah, talk he to was him great. Still once a month, like he's an awesome. Yeah, 
he was hard to work for the next year when I went into the assistant coach and running the youth hockey because he thinks everything had to be done at the rink and we had cell phones you know you can do your best recruiting sitting on your patio sometimes but he liked to be in the rink 10 12 14 hours yeah. and I was driving Zamboni and it was a big change for sure when you're not napping in the afternoon like playing days I he like was definitely that. committed and I mean when he came in here this needed structure and I think uh you know, he built a legend. I mean, he was a legend here, here in Odessa, and uh, he's still a legend with uh, Canadian hockey back home in yeah. Kitchener, Ontario. I mean, deaf, he's deaf Olympic team. He yeah. works with that, but I mean, he was great in the community. That's what made Donnie so good, and that's why Marco too. Like, Donnie knew everybody in the community. People came because of Don McKee, not well, because we were. We've awesome. talked about that many times, and it's like all these programs that went from minor pro to junior. I think the ones that have been more successful, the ones who kept that, whether they adapted it after or they had it, was they had guys that were in the community. We talk about this all the yeah. time. margo has been great in the community. When you were here, you were great in the community. Like, that's what these towns need. This isn't, you know, you're up in Canada or wherever in a small town where people are going to come to hockey games just because it's like a religion. They want that interaction and they want people to treat them right and they want to have that kind of community and and you guys brought that and so you well know. and that's the main reason i mean i'm not i'm not afraid to say it i mean that's the main reason why the jackalopes are starting over again right you bring you bring gats into coach and you had kevin here for years and you guys build the relationships around town and then you guys leave and then there's myself and johnny and adam left right and then someone else comes in and nobody knows these guys and now you're rebuilding start again the over. whole thing start you have all to start over all over so when you have owners and stuff that aren't from this area and you have them from out of town and stuff, you really need a local guy that wants to be here. I mean, all these guys use these teams as stepping stones to get to the next level, D1 college, you know, um, the American League and stuff, which I don't blame them at all. But if you have to look for a guy that wants to be committed and wants to live in Odessa, because those are the guys that touch the, uh, you know, they're always touching the community and they're out there make you know, like making friends. And so it's I've hard. always said that from day one. It's hard to get players to come here. We talked about that. I mean, the ownership always said that. How come we can't get? you know the top players and i mean it's bad to say but like modessa is great when you're here it's just getting them here right yeah. and that's how i said okay if i'd talking if they're talking to lone star corpus shreveport and odessa we're probably four yeah yeah but when they get here we treated them really good well i don't know how many players that if i've gone out and been on the ice with you or the other coaches who have been here in the past like um talking to the players after the season whether the season went the way they wanted to or not they always have something pretty good to say about it they love it yeah. so um you know for me it's home and we've talked about this many times and like it gives you a like why don't you know what you do you you and your wife could go and move you could do what you do other places and it's like it's home and it always gives you a kind of like it makes you enjoy going and traveling it and gives I you a reason talked to, leave. i talked yeah. i talked to you about this last time when you go and travel you kind of have a it makes it a little bit better because you know when you're here your your head's down and you're working you have your family here but you enjoy when you go and, and you leave but there's something about odessa that just like kind of brings you back and you just kind of yeah. feels like home so but yeah players always seem to have something they love it good to say even if the season was bad i mean the, the yep. didn't win as many games as they wanted didn't have a good season personally but they always have something good to say whether it's their billets people they met here just the environment and you yeah. wouldn't think that when you first come into training camp you're probably coming yeah. in like how did you guys wow. feel when you first came in well we used to laugh we used to joke in pro we used to fly them in at night if you had a if you, were, if you recruited a player to come in we flew him in at night got him into the apartment <laughs> so they never saw anything till the daytime and they're like oh my god especially if they had a wife or a girlfriend with them then it, yeah for sure you had to Bring keep them blindfolded until yeah. we got to the rink but that makes sense i feel like i remember the ownership back before they turned to junior was always going to pick up a guy at night time always yeah <laughs> I mean, they treated the players here first class. I mean, it was. I mean, it was. Our phenomenal. apartments were awesome. Even yeah. our guys with the juniors, they, you know, they were treated first class. And you know, maybe we, yeah, we should have won more. And that's what you're judged as a coach on wins and losses. But I also wanted the kids to love their experience playing junior hockey because you know what? Not everybody's going to the NHL or even yeah. D one, two, T three. They might be down at 20 years old. Yeah. You know, but they. I want them to think, man, I had a great time in Odessa. And, I want them to love the sport where they're playing when they're 50 years old, like me. Not I'm quitting because I didn't make tier one or tier two hockey or something, you know. And yeah. I think that's happened too much now. Yeah, it's more of a business now, right? I mean, you look at you look at things. I mean, you know, we actually took this summer to enjoy some of vacations this year. So we haven't had a podcast in a while, Johnny. And we're he says we. Yeah. Margo's we. He's been gone for pocket. about a okay. month. Okay. Here, listen. He's got a worm know, in his pocket. Johnny's going to Vegas. I didn't get a vacation. I don't know what he's got. got. A worm in his pocket. <laughs> yeah. That's why he's saying we. Yeah, I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> 
<laughs> me and my buddy here yeah, the, worm. the worm anyways but i'm just saying back in the day you'd play multiple sports you you wouldn't have all these people that uh you know are opening up clinics and training people i mean i just think this this generation is so fast and quick right i mean people don't have time for their kids and doing stuff we talked about this earlier in or a few all they episodes. do is with their kids yeah one and, sport to another and then right. you're, you know it's enjoy your life a little bit here and uh at the end of the day i mean if you still love it at 14 15 you're going to put the time into any sport or any activity that you decide to do i mean i think i just think right now so many people are opening up so many camps and clinics not just hockey i mean baseball and all other sports but uh that's just the way of life right now i mean you know that's the way it goes right so but uh i think it's very important that you do play multiple sports and take the time with your you know, obviously you are, are uh, coming back to Odessa. What's your plans here for Odessa the next next few years? You know what, we well, the main reason why we wanted to come back, obviously the job with Adam when he offered it to me was was great. And then Griffin, our youngest, is going into grade nine. And we, you know, with a coach, you're always moving. And I didn't want to be moving anymore. I wanted to him finish high school. And when he decides wherever he wants to go, then, you know, if we want to move somewhere else and, and retire, then so be it. But we have a lot of good friends here like you guys, and we're excited to come back. My wife's family's in San Antonio, so... We did, you know, like I said, we loved it. It's our third time here, so I mean, the people are good. It's different when you're not in the hockey, obviously. Like you know, every time I've come here, it's been hockey. So we'll see. But you do know, you feel like you're going to enjoy it stay even more? You know what I mean? Like without, because you were on every time you've been here, you're with the team, so you're traveling, you're on the bus a lot. Your weekends are usually not here, or they're here at they're at they're at the rink if you're in town. Do you feel like the connections you made and the people, the friends, and all that? Do you feel like you're going to enjoy this place more? I hope to. I mean, now I got weekends off, we can go do something. Like you and I talked about, if we want to go on a golf trip or we want to go to Napa Valley and visit Levin Val, whatever, I think it opens up a whole lot. Yeah. I mean, we'll also find out if a lot of those people are my friends because of hockey, right? <laughs> Honestly, like I've Very said that true. to my wife, like I'm not coaching anymore. Like, are they going to call you? You know, they need this or that, but it is what it is. You find out. I mean, I mean, I've always, I mean, I'm older, I'm 50 and my, my uncle told me this when we were growing up. He said, your friends become who your kids friends are you know so like if our kids are playing hockey together yeah, we're friends exactly. when our kids yeah. finish playing hockey you go back to your old friends and yep. everything else so yeah they'll change through the whoever your kids are you live through your kids and we we're always older because we had griffin a little bit older so you know a lot of my my buddies were always a little bit younger so it is what it is you still look young it's a lot you of work good. a lot of work i mean johnny's got a good camera angle on you right now so <laughs> <laughs> it covers up the chins a little bit <laughs> this has been margo margo wasn't happy with his appearance last last time he's like can you do some extra work on this i'm like margo th- i can't fix like your your face and like how old you That's look just, it's just it is what it is like yeah. it's just gonna have to deal with it you know we'll start doing this a bag coming from the little skinny rat here that had a tank top <laughs> put on a brown today. paper bag over it maybe we can help that who knows he does look younger than you though he- He's, he's a weather. Johnny. He's a weathered man. Right? <laughs> Here we go. Donnie's lived, the hard, go. Donnie's lived a hard life. Uh, if you put the other camera that you've been trying to fix for the last three weeks, you know you could actually see it. But we, yeah. we're just not prepared. We got bugs flying in here. The kids are in the pool. We get, like it's just it is. It's the fourth. Cameras it's aren't, a holiday. Cam- cameras aren't working. So it's a holiday. And it you is got the me fourth. Working. We are filming this on the and fourth. And you got of me July. working. Is this really work for you? Uh, would you like to uh, come over? I'll cook you a couple burgers if we could do a podcast. I said, yeah, I'll be over. You didn't I said, say, you I, said I got a family of six now. I would, I mean, you know what you we do should it? do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hide a camera in here when we start a podcast, and they're all the same. Margo comes in here, and he's like, demands, like, wants water at a certain temperature. He's asking, like, is, is this should already be set up. I want you to set up one like tripod. Zoolander, just one the male uh, model. I never got a water. Hey, Zoolander. Male model, you and Greener, back in the day. Oh, man, come on. <laughs> Pop, I think I'm getting the black lung. <laughs> so, come on, with the stories here. We, we, got, we have nothing like the, the, the wasn't many stories have wanted back some in the good day. stories. I mean, it wasn't many stories. I mean, we, uh, we enjoyed playing together. It was a good, good time, good opportunity for myself. I mean, I got to play with a lot of young, older guys that year. And, uh, you know, we ended up winning the Governor's Cup, I believe, that year. And um, well, We lost uh, Laredo. The Governor's Cup. Yeah, we won the league, but yeah, then the league. Laredo beat us in the playoffs. And but, uh, no, it was a good time. I mean, I, I think, just like Greg said, I mean, I was here. I mean, the people here, they just treat you, I mean, tremendously. And, I mean, the hospitality, I mean, that's the reason why I stayed. I mean, I came back for a few tours myself, you know, left for a few years, kept coming back. And uh, but so many the, people are still yeah. here. Look at West Texas, Amarillo with yeah. with Eric and, and Schaefer and yeah. all those guys and, and Hebert. Around. And then you look at yourself and, you know, Doyle and Crespin and Dano and yeah. – Gourmet, like everybody's, you know, I think it just says something to the community. Like your core guys stayed in their areas, right? I mean, all those guys now they're owning NA. That's why you thought he is just thriving here in yeah. Amarillo is because of you guys, really. So, yeah, well, I guess it's more like. 
the on ice stuff is great, but I think it's the the off ice stuff people people like to hear. Like I remember when um, I won't say any names who put me up to this, but when I was like a stick kid for the team the last like four years that they were here. Like I remember there was a guy. It might have even been before that. There was a team. They were green. Memphis. Memphis River Kings. Yeah, River Kings. They were Kings. green, right? Mm-hmm. Didn't they have green jerseys? Yeah. They had some chubby guy on their team. I don't remember his name, and I'm going to look him up. But he was chirping back and forth the whole period. So someone on the hockey staff sent me a text while they were in the second period and said, go up to the concession stand. They know you're coming. They got something for you. And text me when you get them. So I went up, and they give me two hot dogs. So I'm like, okay, I got them. He's like, I want you to go into their locker room and stick these hot dogs in this player's gloves like in his second pair of gloves because he'd always put his extra pair and he'd switch them out in between periods and i'm like kidding me so i go in there and i'm I'm like sneaking around and i go and shove these two hot dogs in in this guy's pair of gloves (laughs) and i'm just like waiting for him to come out he loved it probably he might have ate them i think he did eat them but like stuff like that right i just remember just some of the fun stuff that went on behind the scenes like do you remember do you remember when donnie Hired those girls from like Hooters or wherever it was to sit beside the visitors bench. Oh yeah, he's on that. The before. shortest dre- shortest skirts and talter tops, and they'd sit right beside. Don the- McKee. Oh yeah. So what happened? They would just get up and they'd stretch and walk around, and the whole bench would be. We'd get that. Oh, whole just bench- to get the like uh, the, the other team, team just out to get of it, their yeah. attention. <laughs> they, they yeah, would, back their whole in the day. heads would snap, and Donnie'd make some trades or changes or whatever. He he had every little trick in the book, old Donnie. I mean, we used to have a lot of stories. I mean, we'd stay out late. You know, we'd be able to DJ at Dos Amigos. I mean, we'd. We pretty much run the place and hang out, but uh, I cooking, remember going back to steaks at Dole's and I remember going back to Dolly's house a few times. You know, Dolly's a pretty class, you know, pretty funny guy, and he go through the classifieds and he he'd be looking like, uh, oh, look at this lady, and he, <laughs> man, they're selling a boat. It'd be like three in the morning. I'd be calling up, uh, yes, yeah, sir. I'm sorry, I've been working midnights this whole week. Uh, I'm calling about your boat. It'd be like three in the morning. Uh, you know what's the poundage on that? I got. I tell you what. I got a sister-in-law coming to town next week. She's about four fifty. He would tell jokes. I mean, we got in trouble a few times. We got ratted out. But I mean, that was our time. We would just hang out with the guys and you know just have fun till like two, three in the morning and do it all over again every day. Eighties so. party. We had the eighties yep, party. We, we did. Walked into Walmart looking for uh, propane with our eighties outfits on, stereo over our shoulders. Yep afros it was uh, it was just a little like goofy the bruins stuff. just did that right they did something like yeah. that when they played the yeah. outdoor game they're yeah. all dressed, they all in dressed their up in their 80s yeah. stuff and a lot of teams are doing that like tampa rays i think do like a jersey thing where every i still wear trip, my 80s every road clothes. trip they wear like a <laughs> different jersey say, donnie really hasn't changed <laughs> much he wears it all got the time. My 80s he just clothes. kept all the clothes from that party it was <laughs> it was about a year ago that donnie stopped wearing bell bottom jeans he didn't oh, really realize that they were jeans in a year Johnny That's got what me I just wearing said. these. A year. Yeah. I got these skinny jeans now. Johnny makes skinny me wear them, right? Because yeah, he shares a closet with his those, wife. I don't even know what those are. He shares a closet with his wife. He comes in. He wears the sneakers, you know, the old three-quarter jeans. I'm like, oh, let me try a pair no of those. No chance could I fit into a pair of skinny jeans. Margo's, I tried a pair of uh, George Straits one year in San Antonio. I Molly and I went to the Wrangler place, and she goes, try these George Straits. I couldn't even get them past my kneecaps. Well, I did see the uh, I did see the Hockey DB. It had you at. 209. I mean, that's, well, that's on a good that day. needs to change. It's a good day. They right? need to change the stats on that yeah. for you. That's Six over. one two oh nine. I was like, shit, get the men's league stats. That's from the, that. way, <laughs> it's from the west waist down, 209. <laughs> you get, but who was your bus driver during that year? Yeah, Lucky? Was Lucky our no, bus driver? No, we had... Uh, Chance? No, the old guy. He drove for me a couple times this year. Jimmy? No, Rick. Jimmy. No. Actually, Kyle drove a couple times too, but... Mm-hmm. When did oh, Rick Jackson come? That out? was in Ricky Jackson. Okay, oh, yeah. Ricky. he was. You had aw- Rick. I had Rick. He, he oh, yeah. was awesome. He was awesome. And then we had the Alan Tricky ja- Ricky, Alan Jackson's old bus. Yeah, he was the best bus driver. I, I mean, when I traveled with the team, he, that's who ha- he had, or that's who they had. Um, and he was just like, you didn't worry about anything, right? No. He was just oh, pretty my, steady. My first year I had a guy named Lucky. He still works. He's about. He's probably seventy now. We'd always know when Lucky was driving because. It would be 2 in the morning, and all of a sudden, you smell these DeMore lights or you yeah. know cigarettes in the bunks. He'd light up. He had four fingers. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be like, Lucky, blow it out the window. Ah, shit. <laughs> we had Leroy in San Antonio. Leroy, keep her oh, between yeah. the lines. Ah, oh, shit, shut <laughs> up. <laughs> we we well, had a, one trip. I can tell you, in San Antonio, we had a 
the, one of those tractor trailer ones. Yeah. And we had the cooler, you know, they had a, when you lifted up the one bunk, it was a cooler seat so to keep all your beer there for road trips. And we came back on the one trip, and I remember it was Desi Mark DeSantis's bunk. Oh, yeah. And we're like, Desi's like, we got no beer. Like, what's going on? Who's stealing all our beer and stuff, right? And some guys are like, yeah, like some of my stuff's missing from my bunk. And we're like, okay, well, something shady, right? So we, we park, we come back from a road trip, and our bus, which we called him T-Money, it was Tony. We caught, we follow him. He'd parked the bus at the rink, lived, lived in the bus. We had satellite TV, we drank a beer, eating all our food. Lived right on our bus. He didn't have a place to live. <laughs> <laughs> all those guys. Well, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, he put out the queen bed. He had satellite made TV, it crushing made it work. beer, like air conditioned. He was loving life. I got, um, I don't know, kicked out of a game. We were at a showcase. I got kicked out of a game. And so I went on to the bus. Like I got showered, went onto the bus. I was done. I didn't even want to stay inside. And I was on the bus and, and I walk like, I don't remember, but they're almost like they had like the front of it wasn't connected to the back, but it was a sleeper bus. It was a really nice bus. So um, I heard something and I went and peeked my head and opened this little door and just so like cloud of smoke just <laughs> comes out. And the guy was just Cheech smoking and weed. Yeah, just, Cheech and just hot boxing himself in, in the front there. And I'm like, oh, my God. And this guy's about to take us across the country. And so we're, we're dropping guys off at the airport because it was right before Christmas break. And we were in, like, I think it was, like, I think we were in Vegas, actually. And we're pulling into the airport. And we just, like, we got in a wreck is what it felt like. Just the whole bus got sh- shooken up. And what he did was he didn't read the clearance. So he took the whole top of the bus off pretty much. <laughs> Satellite. There were gaping holes on the top of it just took it out and i'm like this guy because this guy's high and like i didn't want to like i told our our, now, our yeah. coach but i don't remember how it ended up he got fired obviously but we're driving back and it was snowing and i'm sleeping in my bunk and snow's falling into <laughs> into the bus as yeah, we we're had a driving few of those we had a few oh. of those stories we were driving Seven. to san angelo one time and we got to the rink and there's no trailer <laughs> we lost our trailer say, i don't know if it was you i was sitting no i was on the san antonio bus same thing team money still driving and uh we play. We start, first we go pull into Austin to get something to eat, and he high centers our bus. So we got to call the fire department. We got to run to the front, run to the back, and they finally get us. And Chris Stewart, you're just like called. teetering. Yeah, Chris, we're teetering. So the fire department has to come pull us and run. And Chris, yeah. you know Chris Stewart. I don't know if you know Chris Stewart. He was, he was a tough coach, and he was just losing it. Well, then we get going, and it's like nine, ten o'clock at night, and those tractor trailers had a big TV at the front, so you could see your trailer yeah. behind you, right? And I remember we we're sitting there playing cards, and one of the guys goes. I think we just lost our trailer. We look on that TV and it was tumbling and gear was flying. Oh, so, yeah. like, when yeah, it, it was like the trailers that you just put all the gear in. Yeah. yeah. Didn't yeah. hook it up. That's all you Team did. Money forgot to put the pin in, whatever. We lost all. And it was, so we were all on the road picking up our gear all over the road, have to wait for oh, another truck smokes. to come out. Like, oh. Yeah, we got delayed in San Angelo one time because of that. We're in San Angelo, we turn in and there's no gear in the back. And about, about an hour down the road, they, they found, found everybody's it. Yeah, gear. They found everybody's gear in the trailer. So, that's good. I'm going to do a quick little uh, break right here to, uh, we got to shout out our, uh, I was on a podcast recently in Dallas. And so because of that, I want to give them a shout out because they brought me on and I'm sure if you would have been there, they'd love to have you on too. But um, Adam Larson in the Dallas area, uh, his podcast is called The Face Off Spot. Um, So if uh, you guys. How was it? It was great. I mean, it was, it. it was awesome. We actually sat we were in the at the Plano Star Center and the alumni game was going on so we were actually upstairs getting to watch it as we were doing the podcast Tell Donnie so. to say alumni 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 <laughs> alumni, <laughs> alumni. <laughs> I always love when Donnie says the alumni game <laughs> alumni game I, I Donnie's kind of got his own language and I've deciphered it yeah. so I know when he what he means <laughs> Or Donnieism, so they call it. They call it the fire station. But I wanted to give him a shout out, Adam Larson, the Face Off Spot. They actually do a lot with um, Rube's Brews. You know John and his brother Chris. They they have their own kind of brewery thing going on. So shout out to them, Rube's Brews. If you're ever in that area and you can grab a six pack or whatever, um, Rube's Brews. So you guys got to send me some now. (laughs) Rube's Brews, send some beer. I think they actually just did another beer for the face-off spot because they have a like a beer and it says the face-off spot it's a really, really? cool looking yeah it's we really need cool to make well, shreveport does that right they do the penalty block they, oh that's a, right there's a brewer there's that's a brewery right. in uh, shreveport and it's called the penalty block oh the penalty i always block. wanted to get one like one of these breweries to do one like a jackalope lager extra hops or something you know but nobody ever listened maybe to you're it. onto something 100 percent. i think we should try we're not part of the job well you let's are. go Jack get it Lope, going you thought lager <laughs> A little lighter. 
but shout out to those guys. We appreciate you having me on. Um, we'll have Adam down and maybe even Chris and John with what yeah, they're doing. Chris doing should. the Rubes brews. Like we'll have them on, but um, maybe they'll uh, they'll send us some uh, some six packs and you guys oh, can yeah. test it out. <laughs> we should shout out to my cousin Matt who played in the NHL. There, he has a brewery, Top of the Mountain Brewery in Nelson, BC. He can send us some some brews. I don't I mean, think he when can you're send us a shout out like this. So, hey. I mean, when you're on the air like this and yeah. getting all these likes, Nelson I mean, Nelson might, Brewing Company, one of the oldest breweries to. in Canada. So when he finished in the NHL, he bought a brewery and moved to Nelson, BC. Nice. Yeah, does he's killing it, making hemp beer and organic beers, and that's kind of the new thing now. Killing hemp it, beers. So what's the plan for the summer here? I know you got a lot of vacations planned. <laughs> And uh, I've been trying to get it back on the show, get this ninth episode, and this guy's been delaying me. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, get the yeah. pool fixed. Uh, every other week, Donnie FaceTimes me, and he's in a new location, and I'm just like, man, it must be nice. It no must kidding. be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Cleaning up on it's the off hockey. season. It's the off season. Yeah, we Clean start hard next week. Dry land. He just just made him money. This kid <laughs> sponsor. sponsor. Yeah. So, well, we have our our golf trip coming up, and then. Yeah. Um, I'll be heading off to Vegas after that, so it's going to be a, a fun July. And then I think we go to Amarillo. Yep, Trouts. We have Trouts on the 23rd this year, that. which is a little bit later. So that's going to be a. And then once Trouts come, I mean, we're going we're going full fledged full youth tilt. hockey. So we got we got camp coming up, and uh, and then obviously Labor Day weekend. So yep. Gats is going to be getting his crew here and getting all moved into the new house into, and into July finally. Yeah, you got a good contract, got a brand new house too. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll be coming over the other side. There's no contract in that. That's what else you got, Margaretsky? Nah, I'm just going to say it's good to have you back. It's fun. It's fun hanging out, you know, 4th of July, kids in the pool. You know, I did was on the hockey news. Remember you're saying how you're Don, Donnie Cruz. Yeah. I was in the hockey news. You were? Yep. And when uh, I played in Colorado Springs, so I came back from Europe and we went to Alaska. This is always my, one of my best stories. The guys always, cause I show them in the hockey news that I have, I played goal for 12 minutes of the third period in a pro hockey game. So I had a goal and assist and I had 12 saves in the third period. No kidding. So I have a thousand save percentage for the <laughs> Colorado Gold Kings. That's awesome. So our goalie got hurt, didn't make the trip. So we get in warm up, and of course, I rip one in the half moon, hit our starter right in the throat and warm up. <laughs> this was your fault. So we have a, a backup from, he's a pizza delivery guy from Alaska. He starts the game. We're up like seven to three. I have my first pro goal, got an assist, playing good. He pulls his hammy. This kid from Alaska pulls his hammy. Coach goes, it was Kirk, Kirk Tomlinson. Put the stuff on. I said, man, I'm on fire. I got a goal and assist. <laughs> you hit him in the throat. Go put the gear on. Oh, man. So I had Team Canada gear wearing number 14. Made like 12 saves in the third period. Never even got a star. Goal and assist and 12 <laughs> saves. But I made the hockey news. I was in the front, uh, the pluses or whatever. My dad phoned me. What kind of league are you playing in? <laughs> yeah. So that was you my... got any stories like that? Uh, well, I know you don't have any goal and assist stories, but I mean, anything. Actually, like... yeah, I was playing for the London Knights one time, and it was to make playoffs. We're in Sault Ste. Marie, and... Pull out the old whippersnapper, top cheese, and Dan Gluche, and uh, <laughs> made, the, <laughs> made the hockey news store the next day. I think it was my first Whipper goal. Snipper, yeah. <laughs> Whippersnapper. Somebody upstairs. banked it in off him. <laughs> no, I didn't play goalie, but uh, I mean, I played goalie in ball hockey back in the day, but that's it. Those were fun. I actually I put I the pads on a few times. Yeah. I put the pads on a few times. Yeah. I, like, I like playing goalie, but that's I wouldn't a lot put the of pads work. on now. I have, when I. Well, that's, why, that's why Gormy quit. Oh, man. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. He's quit a long <laughs> time ago. Alum- Even seen, in the alumni game. Yeah. <laughs> You've seen Gormy a while. Can he put his skates the on? The one period in the alumni game. I'm done. Yeah, he was asking me to tie his skates. He couldn't bend over and tie him up. That's hilarious. Well, that fun. We'll have to do that again, that alumni. It was good. We do have to do that again. Yep, soon. Well, we're getting, uh, we're getting on our uh, little last uh, bit here, so I guess I'm going to call it. Uh, we appreciate. We'll do this again. Gaps Absolutely. is back, so yeah. we'll have you kind of on maybe as like a regular if your uh, schedule allows for it. So, yep. Ping um, pong night until somebody beats me here. in ping pong, and we'll keep going at it. And you need to play again. All right, we'll, we'll go play right now. Yeah. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Subscribe, like, you know, hit the bell so you know when we're coming on YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes. This is the Chirp Hockey Podcast. We'll see you next time.